It's so good to see everyone here this morning. It sounds so beautiful up here singing. I thank the Lord for our Sunday school department and everything that was said this morning, encouraging us in the Word. I want to speak to us this morning on a topic that I feel that the Lord given me, a quick work. How many believe the Lord's going to do a quick work? Amen. Now listen, I don't care if you're 95 or 5. We don't have long left. Amen. The Lord is soon returning. If you look in Matthew chapter 24, I want you to pray for me this morning. I want to get right into this that the Lord would speak to us from his word today. But in the 24th chapter of, of Matthew, the disciples spoke with the Lord, questioned him of the end times and of the signs of his coming. And as he warns them of deception, of wars, of rumors of wars, of famine, of pestilence, of earthquakes, he said, these are going to be the beginning of sorrows. False prophets, iniquity, and so on. But if you'll look with me in verse 22, I want to focus on one thing this morning that the Lord spoke about. He says, and except these days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. I want to stop right there for just a minute. Except these days. What days is he talking about? These days is what the word says. Ain't it? These days. In reference to just before the return of the Lord was what the question was all about here. The end time, the signs of his coming. The Lord said these days are going to be shortened. Except these days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. We're talking about serious business here, aren't we? Amen. Except these days, that why? They're going to be so evil, Brother Nick. The, the wrath of Satan on this world, his manipulation of the souls of man is going to be so great and powerful. The Lord said, except these days be shortened, there would no flesh be saved. Hmm. Now, man, that's something we could spend all day on that one little phrase right there. We're living in crucial time. These days, just before the return of the Lord... The power and the magnitude of sin on this world is going to be so powerful and is so powerful. The Lord's going to do something about it. Why? That somebody might be saved. Because if not for the hand of the Lord, the power of the enemy of your soul is going to grow so powerful. The word of God says there would be no flesh that would be saved. Hmm. Except these days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect sake, for the elect sake, those days shall be shortened. Thank God. Listen, many people today, and when I use that word people, I'm not talking about the covenant members of the body of Christ. I'm not talking about the saints of God. I'm talking about people in general. Many people see the signs of sin and the magnitude of sin. You hear everyone saying on every hand, the world can't stand much longer. I had a conversation with this week, this week with a man in the secular world and he made that statement to me. He didn't know what I was preaching on. 
But he said the, the world can't stand much long. Listen, there was a day in Sodom and Gomorrah's time that the sin of the world rose so great that the cry of the sin reached unto heaven for judgment. Listen, if you don't think we're there today, you're deceived. Verse 27 in that chapter says, For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. God's going to do a quick work. Now, sin's on rampage, no doubt. Iniquity, lawlessness, the love of God of many are growing cold. Huh? Sin getting more powerful by the minute. Church houses are shutting their doors. Several years ago there in our hometown, a huge Methodist church right there on the main drag of Reedsville that had been there for years and years and years and years, the congregation began to fall off and began to fall off and began to fall off till finally it got to where they was only having one service a week. And finally, there was not enough to keep the doors open to pay the bills. And they finally locked the door. And what few was left went across town to join another little congregation. I'm talking about a huge church. But as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even into the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. We better be ready, watching, because the Lord's going to do a quick work. The Lord speaks here in this chapter of the parable of the fig tree, very short, to the point, very simple. Anybody can understand it. He speaks about the fig tree. He says, when, when it put it forth its leaves, what, what, what do you know? What's this saying to you? Summer is nigh. That's... That's as simple as it gets, ain't it? Listen, we need to understand what hour we're living in. We need to have the Spirit of the Lord open our eyes and reveal unto us where we are and what's going on around us. It don't get any simpler than the, the parable of the fig tree. You see it bearing its leaves, you know, summer is nigh. Verse 36. But of that day and hour... Knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Verse 42 says, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Now, if we believe the Lord's going to do a quick work, if we believe his word is sure and true, and the prophecy there is true, if we believe that, we must be watching every hour. Hmm. Listen, we see wars. We see the climate change and, and, and the, the, the confusion of the seasons. We see pestilence, right? We see all those things. There's a swarm of locusts right now, this very hour, devouring the continent of Africa. Did you know that? It's creating a famine there. And the lives of millions are threatened because of a pestilence. Jesus said, look at the fig tree. When you see the leaves, summer is nigh. Oh, God help us today. I hope that the word of God can sink into your heart and the spirit of the Lord can shape something within us. There's a coronavirus, right? Started, to, what, a few weeks ago, maybe a month or two, I can't remember, there in China, and it has spread across the world. And people are dying. Started out as just a little sniffle, just a little common cold. But people are dying. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father 
only. Hmm. God help us. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Now, what is going to have to take place on this universe that we live to get our attention? What will it take for us to understand the return of the Lord is nigh at hand? Can't we not see? Look with me in Luke chapter 12, verse 54. And he said also to the people. Now, the Lord was speaking to an innumerable multitude of people. That's what the Bible said. An innumerable multitude of people. Now, he speaks to them here and says, When you see a cloud rise out of the west... Straightway ye say, there cometh a shower, and so it is. And when ye see the, so the south wind blow, ye say, there will be heat, and it cometh to pass. But ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that ye do not discern this time? Oh, God, help us. Oh, we can look at the whole sky and the whole face of the earth and we can discern everything that's going on around us. But the Lord said, you can't even discern this time that you're living in right now. Mm. Oh, God, help us. We must be aware of a quick work that the Lord is going to do. Listen, some people believe... I, I, the Lord, he probably going to return in my lifetime. How many believe that? Amen. Well, I've heard people say that all my life. Huh? For 55 years now, I've heard people say, I'm, well, the Lord, he'll return in my lifetime. But you know what? There's some people who don't even believe that. Huh? Some people believe maybe God will return in my lifetime or a particular era that everything falls into place. Some people believe a particular decade, huh? or maybe a year. I've heard people talk about a year, a particular year. Well, some people may even narrow it down to a month or a week or a day. But Jesus spoke about an hour. Huh. An hour, one hour in this very day right here could be the hour that our Lord returns. Hmm. Now, how many of us is looking to that? Oh, I believe, you know, I, I'm, you know, I think about my little grandchildren just, just being born and they're way down here and I think, you know, yeah, praise God, they'll probably be carried away in the rapture. Hmm. You know, I don't think, you know, but what about this very hour? Am I, am I in tune enough with the Spirit of God that He could show me He could come this very hour? Hmm. Some people's got so much smarts that they think, God, the Lord can't return until this takes place. Let me tell you something. The Word of God says He's going to do a quick work. Oh, one day with Him is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day what the word says what about when he says a quick work yeah. hmm how quick is that Paul spoke of a short work look with me in the book of Romans chapter 9 verse 26 and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them ye are not my people there shall they be called the children of the living God. Oh, now he's talking about the, the Gentile dispensation here. You know what? One at one particular point in time, we was not even considered a people. Dogs, heathens. Oh, now we can be called the children of the living God. Oh, ain't it funny how fast Things happen. Once we were not even a people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. See, Paul is speaking of here, and it shall come to pass. 
Well, it came to pass many, 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 many years ago. Grace was offered to the Gentiles. Oh. Isaiah also cries concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Huh. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Hmm. How many is preparing for this very hour? Hmm. Isaiah saw the church in the last days in the Gentile dispensation. He saw the glory of the church. Right? Look with me in Isaiah chapter 60. Anybody ever read this before? Every one of us, arise and shine. Isaiah 60, verse 1 through 3. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Oh, when is that going to take place? It's already taken place. Have you ever thought to yourself, Lord, how did I get here doing what I'm doing in this particular place, this particular hour. You ever felt that way? Many times in my life. Listen, the Lord is ministering to this world right here through Zion. I had a, a secular meeting with a man this week. We sat down to have lunch. He was talking about different things. And he began to talk to me about being a pastor. Who are you affiliated with? Church of God. Oh, which one are you? <laughs> I said, the Church of God. <laughs> oh, but who? Where'd you come from? So I went back and I, well, Jesus set the church in order. <laughs> and I began to, I had an opportunity right there to share the history. <laughs> of the great church of God with a man of this secular world that walked up to me, sat down and said, would you tell me about it? <laughs> Woo! That's special, ain't it? Huh? As I spoke to him, he said, well, let me ask you this. Where do you stand on sin? You know we're all sinners, right? Hmm, I said, hmm. I said, Jesus come to do away with sin. In God there is no sin. So I don't believe you can sin a little more or less every day and still be right. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, I guess so. He said, well, let me ask you this. I didn't know I sat down and was fixing to be interrogated <laughs> by someone of this world who wants to hear, oh, would you tell me? <laughs> Ain't that special? I tell you, the Lord's going to do a quick work. When he can use a little old peon like me in a heartbeat, in a moment of notice, I took no thought for what I was going to say. I didn't know I was going to be questioned anything. He said, tell me, how do you feel about homosexuality, transgender, lesbians? I don't know this man. He may be one. <laughs> but I had to look him in the eye and say, it's sin. It's sin to God. We have accounts in the Bible that shows us plainly. It's sin. And he sat and looked at me and listened. And the next thing I knew, we was talking about something in the secular world again. Huh. Let me tell you something. God's going to do a quick work and he's going to have somebody to use. Will it be you? <laughs> oh, God help us this morning. In the last chapter of 
For in the last verse of that chapter there in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 22, he says, A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. <laughs> Woo! I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Listen. A few weeks ago, a virus broke out in China and the people began to drop. Somebody saw a great need. Lives were at stake. This coronavirus affecting millions of people across this world. I forgot what the number is now, the people who has died. But somebody saw a need. These people are going to have to be ministered to physically. They're going to have to be treated. Lives are at stake here. Well, listen, there was a hospital erected. We're not talking about a little Johnny house, a hospital. Two stories high. 366,000 square feet able to house 1,500 patients like that. You know how long it took them to build it? I'm talking about from the time that they went in and cleared the land until the day they opened the door and said, come in. Ten days. Woo! (laughs) Don't tell me. If a man here on this earth can see a need and put something into action to minister to the lives of those who are falling and are dying. Don't tell me the Lord Jesus Christ can't do a quick work. Woo! <laughs> Ten days erected a two-story hospital and opened the door and said, come in. Hmm. Why? 7,000 people said, I'll volunteer, I'll work. And they began to labor 24 hours around the clock. And in 10 days, they opened the door and said, bring them in. (laughs) Oh, yeah, the Lord's going to do a quick work in Zion. A little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Not in my time, not in your time, but in his time. Jeremiah, the Lord called him to be prophet of Israel. But listen, when he spoke to Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly. (laughs) Now, Jeremiah was born... That was a little seed planted back there nine months ago. The Lord said, before I formed thee in the belly. Well, how did he come to be? The Lord blessed that womb and a child began to grow in that womb nine months ago. But before then, he said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. <laughs> Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee. Hmm. Sometimes we feel like we're nothing and nobody. And how we got to where we're at doing what we're doing, God in heaven only knows. But you're right. He does know. And he knew way back yonder. He said, Jeremiah, before, before I even formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Destined, destined on God's plan to become the prophet of Israel. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I ordained thee. Listen, to do what? Oh, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. 
Oh, Jeremiah had his hands full like that, didn't he? He said, I knew thee. Huh? I ordained thee. I sanctified thee. You got some pulling down to do, boy. Huh? You got some rooting out to do. Huh? Jeremiah says, Lord, in this capacity, I'm only a little child. I don't know how to do all of this. I can't even speak in this capacity. Right? But then he said, but the Lord came and he reached and he put his hand on my mouth. Huh? And he said, I, God said, I have put my words in thy mouth. Don't say you're a child and you can't speak. I'll put my words in your mouth. Now listen, God had a purpose with Jeremiah. He said, I'll put my words in thy mouth. There along in verse 11, Jeremiah saw his first vision. The Lord had purposed and showed him what he was going to do to the nations, what he was going to speak. And then he showed him a vision. And he said, what seest thou, Jeremiah? Look around. What do you see? Oh, this is beautiful. Jeremiah said, I see a rod. Now let's stop right there for just a moment. I see a rod. You know what a rod represent? Correction. Chastisement. Judgment. Yeah. Huh? Jeremiah said, I see a rod. <laughs> Not only do I see a rod, but he said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Well, what's significant about that? Listen, Jeremiah had clear enough vision he could distinguish what he was seeing. Huh? It wasn't just any old rod. It was the rod of an almond tree. God said, thou seest well. <laughs> I want that kind of vision, don't you? Thou seest well, Jeremiah. What was special about an almond tree? Listen, if you remember back there, Aaron's rod that budded, remember? Israel, I believe it was Korah and some of their following had stirred up a, 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 a mess there in the camp, speaking out, murmuring against Moses and Aaron and against God. The judgment of God fell on them. I, I believe, I can't remember, was it 14,000 that suffered in the plague that I believe it was 14,000. Moses and Aaron tried to get between God and the people and try to stay the, the plague of the Lord. And God spoke to Moses. He said, Gather the camp together and let every man of the house of his family bring a rod. He's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. Each one of them bring a rod and put their names on the rod. But on Levi's rod, put Aaron's name on it. See, some people had trouble with Aaron. <laughs> Remember? But the Lord told Moses, put Aaron's name on Levi's rod. Bring them all, 12 of these rods, into the tabernacle. I'm going to show you something. <laughs> and he brought the rods in, the 12 of them, into the tabernacle. And he laid them down. And the next day he went back. And he walked in, and there was the 12 rods just as he left them. Except Aaron's rod. <laughs> oh. It was budding and had buds on it. It was blooming and had blossoms on it. That's what the Word says. Not only that, it was bearing almonds. <laughs> oh, that's strange, ain't it? God does strange things sometimes, don't he? but it was a testimony unto the whole camp of Israel of the power of the Lord. Now Jeremiah said in his vision, I see the rod of an almond tree. What's he mean? A rod of correction, of chastisement, of judgment. And not only that, something that was coming quick. 
it was the rod of an almond tree. The first to bud, the first to break out, the first to bear in the springtime, even in January when all the other uh, trees are, or, or, you know, dormant and hadn't broke out yet. The almond tree is already beginning to bud. And by early March, it's already got almonds on it. The Lord said, thou seest well. Thou seest well, Jeremiah. Thou hast well seen. I will hasten my word to perform it. Now, not only did the Lord say, I'm going to use you, Jeremiah. I'm going to put my words in your mouth. You're going to root out, pull up, destroy, pull down. You're going to build and you're going to plant. And you're going to do it quick. He said, I will hasten my word to perform it. In the messages to the seven churches of Asia, there is a, there is a statement there of the angel of the Lord that gave the word to John who wrote it. But these seven letters contained many things. And they were carried and distributed out to the seven churches. But there's a phrase there that is repeatedly seen in these letters. The Lord says, repent or else. Repent or else. Repent or else. Then he says, or else I will come quickly unto thee. Hmm. We better understand God's going to do a quick work. God ain't, God ain't prolonging nothing past his time. God is long-suffering, not willing that any would perish. But listen, the world is coming to a climax right now. The Lord is fixing to step in and shorten the days for the elect's sake. Revelations 22 and 20 there. In the closing of this great word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have the last recorded words of Jesus Christ in this word here. It says, surely I come quickly. Are you ready for the Lord's return today? He's coming. He's going to do a quick work. He's getting a church ready. Some people believe there's more problems in the church than we'll ever fix. You're probably right. But God can fix them like that. God can fix them like that. God's work is not going to be hindered by me or you or anybody else. You know what happens to people when they get in the way of God's work? Sometimes they quit breathing like that. Hmm. You know what happens to people, Korah there, that rose up against Aaron, Moses, and God? There was a point in one place God told Moses, they ain't rejected you. They rejected me. You know what happens? Sometimes the earth opens up and swallows them up and closes in over them. God's going to do a quick work. He's going to cut the time short for the elect's sake. Listen, there's, there's a spirit of the devil that's coming on this world right here that we can't even imagine. But God's going... He's fixing to step out on a cloud and rapture his saints away from this calamity that's about to fall on this earth. I want to be ready to go, don't you? Thank the Lord for his word and for speaking to our hearts, trying to help us. There's nothing worth missing heaven over. Nothing. Brother Chris taught a wonderful message this morning, the rich young ruler. 
the Lord said, you know, told him about the commandments. He said, I've done all of this from my youth up. The Lord said, go sell what you have. Go sell all your possessions. There's nothing in your life worth missing heaven over. Don't let it be your mother. Don't let it be your father or your children or your brother. And don't let it be the pastor. Hmm? Don't let it be the pastor that would cause you to miss heaven. Oh, God's got his hand on the pastor. Every one of us. Oh, pastor, don't let it be the overseer. Don't let it be that member that would cause you to miss heaven. You know who you got to make it for? You. Huh. I got to make it for me. There's a quick work fixing to take place. I don't want to be left out. If you will stand, thank the Lord for every one of you being in the house.